Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Let's seek the truth and travel the long road to justice together. What you know, alibiers, welcome to a second episode this Friday of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi. Good to have you here. We're going to jump into what happened with cross-exam this afternoon. And I want to apologize. The date in the top left corner, if you're watching on YouTube, has been wrong for two days. My bad. I just fixed it. Ay, yeah, yeah. It's Friday, right? Before we jump in, if you're watching on YouTube, you know the drill. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video, share it with your friends, and you can ring my bell if you want notifications of when I post new content. Click the little bell icon. Music fact of the day, honestly, didn't do a second one, but I'll just say, been listening to some Pink Floyd today. Always a good choice. That's my music fact. Pink Floyd rocks. Okay, what happened on cross? The state started by asking Ashley if Doug ever punched, hit, kicked her. No. Did he ever come at you with a club, a knife, a baseball bat? Did he ever wave a gun at you? She said he waved it in my direction and it was pointed at me. They talk about the 30 years age difference and also the fact they married after 13 days. They move on to when they were talking about starting the ballet company and that the money came from him or investors. Ashley said her mom also helped to fund it. She did not personally financially contribute. She said Doug would not let her work. The state says Doug flew you to South Carolina before you were married, and he paid for that? Yes. The state asked if Doug paid for the cruise she went on. She said no, but he did pay for her friend to go. They revisit those text messages the defense brought up on cross from September 1st, 2016. The defense brought up some of the text messages, but not all that were in that thread. This was from September 1st, 2016. Doug said he felt Renee, her presence, before he saw her. He goes on to say that he and Renee argued maybe five times throughout their whole marriage. And they always ended up laughing because he says he's a clown at heart. Ashley said her ex-husband loved to argue. And Renee and Doug's relationship seems like a hard act to follow. I don't think I've said so far in any of the episodes I've done that she was married before. We really don't know too much about that. They go on to explain that the things Doug was saying in those text messages about making him feel murderous and rage is because he felt she was an easy prey for predators. Just for a little context, on the cruise, she was outside on the top deck and next to a restaurant or bar. When she was on the phone with Doug, two people were expressing their opinion loud enough for Doug to hear. They did not give any context of what the conversation these two people were having or how it related to Ashley. But this is what he was responding to. Doug says she likes to please people, and they used that. He says, at least last night, just the jerks arguing near you put me in a sheer murderous mood, but I couldn't defend you. Ashley says, thank you, baby, but I was okay. He said, it could have been a fight. Only you being with me over time removes the images in my head. Knowing you were taken advantage of still makes me explode with rage. God made you for me. And she says, yes, baby. Doug says to enjoy the beauty he crafted on earth. Doug said he sees Renee as Eva's and not his wife. He said it's strange, but there's no emotional connection. Ashley responds, well, I'm glad. I just wish I could see it that way. Now, at this point, the state asks Ashley if she was jealous of Renee and Doug. And she said, I guess you could put it that way. Ashley responds, and it says he was sitting on a mantle in the background. I'm not sure if she meant she and maybe was referring to Renee's ashes, but that's kind of the context I saw, but it, it wasn't clarified. Ashley says, I'm crazy, I know, but it just killed my heart. He said he sees her in his mind being sexually assaulted, and that haunts him. He gets kind of graphic with it. Ashley said she loves him and never wants to hurt him. He says he wants to go kill him or them. And the state asked if Doug is responding to something that Ashley told Doug. Ashley responded, I'm yours. You're right. 
I want to see you only as my sweet and loving husband who is gentle to me and kind and who is always there and always safe. Let's not ruin the day. And then she tells Doug to tell her he loves her. The state asks if Doug's imagining people hurting her and if they had a conversation saying this happened. That's when she goes on to tell about these two guys talking loudly and Doug got upset thinking they were going to hurt her. And then he imagined her being out in the world without him and people taking advantage of her. He was afraid for her safety, which the thought of her being hurt sent him into a rage. Again, we just don't know the context of what he heard. They move on to Doug having the vasectomy reversal in April of 2017. She did pay for part of that with her credit card. And the state says, all the things you've accused him of and you still want a baby? She said, yes, we wanted a family. The state said on direct, she said the baby was a surprise, but the state says, were you having unprotected sex? And she said, I suppose so. The state says that could result in pregnancy. Ashley said their doctor said it may not happen for a while after that reversal, but she did get pregnant in July of 2017. She said when she found out she was pregnant, this is around the time where he fired the gun in the ceiling and then threw the gun at her. They start going into the argument, which was the same day that this discharging of the firearm happened. The state asked Ashley if she had a problem with Eva. Ashley said she didn't have a problem, but there was a lot of tension. The state asked what was the age difference between you and Eva, and she said around 9 or 10 years. And the state points out Eva had just lost her mom nine months before. Ashley said Doug told her Eva was ready for this and needed a mom. So Ashley thought Eva felt that way and she was excited to be Eva's stepmother. The argument that they had the day he discharged the gun was about a shadow box Ashley gave Eva for Christmas. Inside was a sand dollar that Ashley decorated and then a saying about how seashells come out after storms. Well, Eva took it apart and put a rose from her mother's funeral inside that shadow box. Ashley said it made her really sad because she took a lot of time to make that for Eva. The state asked Ashley if she cried, dropped to the floor, and sobbed hysterically after finding out Eva did that. You were upset. She put her dead mom's rose in the shadow box. Ashley said she was sad Eva took it apart, and she would have bought her another one. The state asks Ashley, did you go to Doug and say Eva was being disrespectful? Were you crying? And did you say you need to handle her? I'm upset and crying. Ashley does not remember saying that. At one point, her and Doug leave to go run errands, and the entire time they're gone, she's still upset and crying about the shadow box. The state said this wasn't an argument. It was you. You were upset. Ashley said Doug said his life was out of control. He couldn't deal with everything going on at home and then the people at the ballet. The state asked Ashley, did Doug ask you to just stop? Ashley said she doesn't know. The state says you kept telling him he needed to discipline Eva. She said, I don't know. He was yelling at me. And the state says, well, you weren't sitting there then like you are now. You don't stop. You're still arguing. She said that Doug was still yelling at her. And the state asked Ashley, were you yelling? And she said, no. They talk about the gun Doug has. He carries it with him and points out that she also carried guns on a regular basis. The state asked if that argument continues once they're back from running errands and inside the house about disciplining Eva. Ashley doesn't remember. Then the state asked, he threw the gun at you? She said, yes, it hit the wall. They asked, when was this? And she said, at the end of June. Then the state asked, when was your wedding reception? And Ashley said it was shortly after that incident, maybe a week or two later. They show photos from that. Ashley was wearing her wedding gown. She had some friends there. Ashley said it was a good day. They move on to her finding out she's pregnant and moving to Florida in August to be with her mom. Ashley said Doug told her he was too busy to take care of her and that her mom would be better suited to do that. So at the end of August, she moves to Florida. And then in November, Ashley got that injunction here in South Carolina. The state asked if the judge never found Doug was dangerous and did the judge order this. 
They ask, Ashley, was this decided through the attorneys and you stipulated? Ashley said the judge ordered it. They move on to after when she's in Florida and Doug sent the tea set for her birthday. The state says you say it smelled so strong that you rushed it to the sheriff's office. Ashley said she sealed it up and put it in the garage. And the state asked for how long. Ashley said a day or two. The state asked, was it maybe more than a day or two? And Ashley doesn't know. The state says you say this was Doug's scheme to poison you and your child. Ashley said it was a concern of hers. The state points out there were no charges filed, and then she files for an injunction there in Florida on those same allegations. Ashley explained the one in South Carolina was ready to expire, so she filed another one. At this point, this is around spring of 2018. The state says you left Doug in August of 2017, and you filed an injunction in spring of 2018, but you hadn't been living with him and had no contact for a long time. Ashley said that's correct. They ask what violence she was trying to prohibit by filing the injunction. And Ashley said she was hoping what happened in South Carolina wouldn't happen again. The state points out she also tried to terminate Doug's parental rights, even though she hadn't been with him for six months or more, and there was no violence other than a tea set. You're filing an injunction and you're trying to terminate parental rights and you hadn't had the baby yet? Ashley doesn't remember exactly the timing, but it was around that time. They talk about that two-day hearing about this injunction. If you remember, it was a couple of months apart. Doug also had a motion to see his baby. Ashley said those things got consolidated. And the state says at this point, at the time of the hearings, how old was the baby? Ashley said their daughter was around six months. The state asked, was there any violence from the time she filed for the injunction and the actual hearing? Ashley said he showed up in her driveway. The state asked, at that point, had the baby been born? She doesn't know the date of when he was in the driveway related to when the child was born. The state talks about that neighbor saying Doug was outside at night trying to look in. And the state says, this neighbor lives across the street. It was very dark out, and your neighbor said she saw someone in her backyard walking. She never said he was at your window. Ashley said Doug was in this neighbor's yard looking into Ashley's window. The state asked if the neighbor said she could not identify this person. Ashley said she had a hard time by his face, but identified him by voice. And the state says, well, that's interesting. You go to her house after she says she saw him. You let her hear a voicemail from Doug and asked if it was him. The neighbor said that's him. The state asked, so that's the identification that he was in her backyard? Ashley said on top of recognizing the voice, the neighbor described his body type and said he was wearing a baseball cap. The state says a lot of people wear baseball hats and are five foot nine. The state points out the person that was in her yard said that they lived in the area. And Ashley said yes. The state moves on and talks about the judge denying the injunction and also orders time sharing and then points out, you decide to go with him and the child on the time sharing. Ashley said she did offer and Doug agreed. The state says, so the person you lived a nightmare with, you go with him. She says, yes. They talk about that honeymoon period where there's several months, almost a year of peace spent a lot of time with Doug and their daughter, and you weren't scared. Ashley said that Doug was being kind, but in the back of her mind, she worried about things. They talk about summer of 2019. You arranged that Doug was going to move in your mom's house, and you agreed. She said, not specifically. I didn't ask. He told me he was moving in. The state says, so you're talking about him moving in, and Ashley said it was more Doug being insistent. In the end, Doug didn't move in, and they talk about the visitation with the daughter continuing. And they ask, who is Dennis? Ashley said she dated him around this time. The state says Doug filed for divorce after one of the visitations. After he knew you were dating this other man, she doesn't know when he filed for divorce. They ask, Ashley, did you tell him you were dating? Ashley says, I think he was stalking me. And the state says, are you sure it wasn't from the ring on your finger? Ashley says, I don't know. I wear rings all the time. After this, the state says, then you start a bunch of complaints about his bad treatment of Emerson. 
Ashley says when she would come home hurt, yes. The state says you file for a petition of an injunction based on that, yes. The state points out there were no charges filed for those complaints. The state asked if she talked to the sheriff's office at least five times, and Ashley said yes. The state asked if she was making allegations Doug was abusing their daughter. She said she explained the injuries and was concerned after her pediatrician called CPS saying she was worried the child was being abused. The state asked if Ashley's aware a pediatrician would have to call CPS if the mother stated the child was being abused or there were worries the child was being abused. Ashley said she didn't allege that. She brought a video to the child's appointment to show the pediatrician this behavior that the child was exhibiting. Ashley said that after showing the pediatrician the video, they said her being the child's mom makes her a mandatory reporter and she would be negligent if she did not. The state says, but you brought it up. Ashley said at the end of the visit, the pediatrician asked if there were any concerns and I showed her a video of the behavior I was concerned about. The state asked about Ashley talking to the sheriff's office and CPS about the allegations. Ashley said, I was describing what I saw, and the state said, you filed an injunction based on these allegations. Ashley said at the advice of her attorney, yes. They move on to that meeting, September 30th of 2020. It seems to me the state sort of stipulated that that hearing on the 30th may have been about this injunction and not the psych report, because the state says, you said you were dropping the injunction, and that was the result of mediation, and you were reconciling. Ashley said, yeah, we agreed since we were moving to Maryland, it would be best to stop everything there in Florida before they moved and they were trying to work it out. The state asked Ashley if she wanted him to stop the motion to release the report and also stop the dissolution of the marriage. Ashley said they filed a joint stipulation to release the report. The state says, but you asked him to drop it. And she says, yes. The state asked if she had any intention of moving forward with the injunction, and she said some days she did, some days she did not. The state says, so you're texting each other, you're packing. This whole time you knew you were going forward with the injunction. So when you're telling Doug to bring things for the move, you ask him to lunch. You're conflicted about whether or not to go forward while you're out having good times with him. Ashley says sometimes things were good, sometimes they weren't. The state proceeds to play that video of them at lunch playing the heads up game. If you didn't listen yesterday, that video is on my YouTube channel in the playlist for this case, by the way. Ashley said she doesn't know the date of that video, but it was right around the time where Doug was shot and killed. The state asked if there was any violence during this period. No. They asked if he hit her. Did he use anything such as a weapon against her during that time? No. In the period between 2019 and 2020, was there any physical violence? Ashley said sometimes he would be a little rough. He didn't punch holes in the wall in Florida, though, and she didn't elaborate on what she meant by a little rough. Ashley said the date of the move was very fluid, and the state asked if she was telling Doug during that time that they would attempt to reconcile once they got to Maryland. She said not in those words. And the state asked if she's denying that she said she wanted to reconcile. Ashley said it was more do things together for Emerson's sake. He wanted to move in and she didn't want that. The state says you told Doug you didn't want him to move in, but you felt safe telling him that. And she said, yes, we had that conversation many times. The state talks about reconciliation and when they were having those joint sessions with the doctor and asked if she didn't feel safe enough in the presence of that doctor to say that's not what I want. Ashley said she didn't want to make Doug look bad in front of somebody else. The state asked if the plan was to move shortly after that court hearing and says you weren't planning to drop the injunction, and you knew on the 30th Doug would know you had no intention of reconciliation. Ashley said they had had that conversation many times, and Doug understood where she was at emotionally. The state says, we saw the text between you two, and it does not indicate that. Ashley says, but it doesn't say we're moving in together. The state says, but it doesn't say we're not reconciling. And Ashley says, I didn't want to argue with him. 
The state asked if that injunction was granted that day, what was your plan about moving with Doug? Ashley said she didn't have a plan. She doesn't know if she was going to go through with the injunction at that point. They talk about the day that Doug is shot and killed and says he came and went twice that day. They point out that her community is gated and so she had to let him in. Ashley said sometimes the gate remembers license plate numbers. Sometimes it opens, sometimes it doesn't. And Doug would sometimes follow people in because the gate would open for a little bit of time once a car went through. The state says, so on this day, you were not concerned about him coming? No. State mentions the mom took the baby to the park and says you weren't so afraid that you wanted your mom to stay there. Ashley said, I didn't expect this to happen. The state asked about the body check, him walking into you with a box, and at the end, you say he slapped you. Ashley says he hit me. She just doesn't know how to classify it. So the state asked, was his hand open or closed? And she doesn't remember. She did say he had never hit her before. State asked about the gun and where was it? She said it was in a laundry basket. They show a photo, which they do not show to the public, and points out where it was. And the state asked, why do you have a firearm there? She said it was what was left in one of her drawers, and the state said you had two guns in there. Ashley said one was in her backpack. She recounts him slamming the door open, saying you're effing done. And the state asked if she feared for her life. She said yes. She held her firearm out so he could see it, and she said stop. So the state asked her to come down and demonstrate, and she does. She cries and says that he got into a fighting mode and turned sideways and started inching towards her. The state asked, why do you call it a fighting stance? She said, because he turned and he's moving his arms around. Show me. Ashley cries and says she doesn't know. She's not a fighter. And then she said she was scared. The state says, so you start shooting and he does what? She said, he keeps coming at me. The state says, so you shot again and he falls down? Ashley said his legs and feet kind of go up in the air. The state asks, when did you stop shooting? She doesn't remember. They send the jury out, come back in, and then the state says, you said you had swelling to the left side of your face. Ashley puts her palm against the left side of her face, and the state puts up the black and white photo. It's actually the one I use on the thumbnails, and ask if this photo was made before she met Doug, and she thinks so. but. They pan over to Doug's cousin, who was the first witness in the case. He's shaking his head no. They show another photo, which was her mugshot that was taken on November 4th. Ashley acknowledges that was the date. No further questions, and there was no redirect, which I thought was interesting. There was another witness, Samora Sweet. She was a staff attorney for the Manatee State Attorney's Office. She got Ashley's case about the tea package and met with Ashley around two times, she thinks. They had a follow-up that second time after they received more information. Now, this witness had left the office before a filing decision was made. She was waiting on a receipt to confirm that it came from Doug, and that's all she knew prior to leaving that position and moving somewhere else. But she did think if that came through confirming it was shipped by Doug, there would be enough information to file. She said when she first met Ashley, Ashley was upset, seemed scared, worried, and she was crying, and she thought it was real fear. The witness says the toxicology report came through, and the witness talked to a doctor who said Ashley had weird things in her blood system at the time, but they could not say where it came from, but there were abnormalities in that report. She thought Ashley seemed to be isolated, and Ashley explained some physical and psychological abuse, and the witness said Ashley seemed to present as someone who had been psychologically abused. She talks about the abused and how they go back to the abuser and gives the example in court. People may come in to defend their abuser or withdraw their complaints altogether. But in the end, she left before she could conclude Doug sent it and file a charging document. Ultimately, one was never filed. On cross, they asked her the time frame that she was there, and she said it was between April 2018 and October or November. The last witness of the day, very brief, Amy Carlton, that's the neighbor who heard gunshots and saw Ashley leaving the house screaming. 
She saw Ashley pounding on the neighbor's door. Doesn't remember much after that. She hid because she did not know what could happen next. She said Ashley was hysterical. And after she heard the gunshots, it only took a matter of seconds for Ashley to come out of the house. So that's it for today. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday.